Okay, so I've made a little bit more progress since the last time in this game. Now I've added a first person controller um, who can go around and uh, dig in the scene. So let's have a look at that and then um, I might have a little bit of a tour through some of the experiments in the code. So now if you left click as I'm doing here uh, you can dig in the terrain. It's taking about a second to uh, update the mesh. Um, none of the data structures here are really optimized. So for example the list of geometry entities that underlie the, um, the voxel model, they're just stored in a linked list. <coughs> so on every single uh, and it's not using octrees or anything, it is uh, generating the terrain every single square. Um, so I, I think that each one of these squares is probably uh, 10 by 10 by 10. So there's probably a thousand points that it's updating. It's still kind of slow. The other question is whether like a thousand, you know, if, the, if everything's memory aligned, your machine can do a billion instructions per second. So doing something on the order of a thousand shouldn't be expensive. Um, I haven't timed whether part of this time is uh, down to um, actually Unity's updating the mesh um, or not. Um, the other thing that I've done is uh, just draped a, uh <coughs> um, a texture over the surface um, and you'll see that the texture gets really stretched in some places. So in some places it looks alright and in other places it looks ultra stretched. Um, I think that the function I've got at the moment is uh, x plus y for the u component and the v component is um, z minus y uh, just so that when you're going sort of up it um, but it really looks stretched on vertical surfaces, which is a bit strange. Oh, it's uh, it's x plus 0 0.2y. So, um, but I've, I found on these spheres, uh, if you, any sort of linear function you use, there's some place on the sphere it'll look bad. There's some situation where, uh, see like here it's stretched on the back of the sphere. So playing around, at least with the linear function, it doesn't work terribly well. There might be some like tan functions or something that um, that work better. Um, I think that really what I might need to do is uh, make my own custom shader um, in order to make that work. I was also showing this to uh, to my kids this morning and they made the point that when you dig into the grass there shouldn't just be more grass underneath, it should be dirt underneath there. Um, and that, that would be relatively easy to do. I could have two geometry objects, one which is um, which is a dirt ground uh, underneath this uh, surface ground. Um, but if I can get custom shaders then I can uh, do things like have the, uh, <coughs> the actual material, have several materials selected for um, a vertex and then uh, you know look at normals and, and things like that for uh, which vertex to select. I think that there's a terrain shader already that takes in um, a number of uh, it takes in a number of materials and then it has what's called a control material that uses uh, the uh, the four the four points to basically blend uh, the uh, the other materials so it uses red green blue and alpha it calls that the control channel um, okay so um, we can have a look at uh, at some of the code uh, Let's have a look first at the, uh, the simple controller. Um, so uh, the update event, I uh, the first thing I have is handle mouse visibility. This is um, if you press tab. Uh, let's go down and have a look at how handle mouse visibility. Basically, if you if you press tab, then um, it will uh, toggle the mouse on and off um, and you do that with this uh, cursor.lock state and cursor.visible. Um, this used to uh, work really badly 
when you're running the game inside the editor, but more recent versions of Unity, they seem to have fixed that. So now it actually works quite well. Um, and then I don't really know how, how to do events properly in Unity, but I'm trying to keep the code a little bit less coupled than it was before. So I have this uh, custom events object, custom events manager, and it's also using a C-sharp feature I'm not very familiar with uh, called delegates. So you can have an event and then you have a sort of, uh, the delegate is a f is basically a type, basically a lambda. Like I don't know why they call it a delegate, just call it a lambda, but it's a, it's a type. It's defining a type for a function. Uh, so then we have uh, an event which is actually, well, this, this whole thing is confusing. You have a delegate and an event. And then you can call the event and then that will uh, distribute that to the various callbacks that have registered. And for some unknown reason, you even though this event is public, you can only post to it from within this object itself. It's another sort of weird restriction. So I have this uh, function invoke mouse mode changed that will invoke the event that will call all of the registered uh, callbacks. At the moment there's one called the dig controller. So this is the dig controller. The other thing that I used to do is I used to wire everything up by hand, um, which is just hard work and you get it wrong and it leads to bugs. So uh, particularly with singleton objects, uh, during start, I use find by find object by type. Um, so all these guys get um, initialized. Um, this dig controller is basically doing the digging. Um, and uh, this guy is actually not even uh, reacting to a callback. So uh, it actually just is using the event manager to pull the state of the event. Uh, to of the mouse mode out of the event manager, um, and then it's using the the player camera to um, uh, to cast a ray and to see uh, what surface it hit, and then it is uh, digging at that point. Um, actually, Edward was saying to me that uh, I should also have. I'm going to copy this code. It's probably bad copying it, but. If you do uh, mouse one, which I think is right click, um, then this should be. I have another function. I think it's build. I'm going to come back and refactor that uh, later to remove the duplicate code. That'll do for now. Um, okay, so. Where's somewhere that we do register? Um, so I have this HUD controller. This is controlling the, the user interface, the 2D user interface that uh, uh, that contains that uh, target targeting uh, circle. So uh, the same thing here, just find, using get components in children and find object um, to find the relevant object. And here it has the uh, on mouse changed event uh, this is the callback that will be triggered and this is how you register you do plus equals on What is that the event or the delegate probably the event? Probably that other one's just defining a type So this seems like it just defines a type and the fact that it's used down here Back I need to bind that back button to uh, alt left um, Yeah, so that's that's a delegate uh, so I was trying to divide up the all the code into um, I, what I used to have is just one big controller that would like do everything and it ended up being a real mess. Um, so I'm trying to use events to uh, separate the objects and make them more uh, encapsulated, more modular. Um, so we have this simple controller. Uh, the, the other thing that I ended up doing is just creating scripts just as a way to tag things. So the way that I find the tag it, the, the target image is I tag it basically by giving it this script. Maybe I should delete these. 
doesn't really matter. There's only one of them in the scene. Um, so I attach, hey, I'll put them back. Uh, I attach them to, I attach this script to the target image and that way I can enable, disable that game object. And I can find it easily with those find functions. Um, okay, so uh, uh, that's that's where I'm up to. Um, we could actually um, go through uh, how uh, dual contouring works. Um, I could show that. It's um, it's maybe a little bit complicated to explain without diagrams, um, but we can have a look. Um, so I have this this function generate mesh, uh, and what this um, what this does first is uh, so I have these uh, helper functions for each cell. So basically, you, you divide up an area into and real dual contouring has uh, uses oct trees. Is it more fancy than this? Um, this is a very simple version that doesn't use an oct tree. It just uses divides up an area into um, three-dimensional uh, grid of uh, cells and then uh, for each point um, uh, I have this so let's go into this guy first and have a look uh, so this takes a, an action to perform and it takes an int array and the int is really just defining which cell let's go back so for each cell, V is defining the cell coordinates. So it's not the coordinates in real space, it's the coordinates, um, it's the cell coordinates, the cell index, if you like. Then we use uh, get position. This uses the, tra this, this thing's running inside a game object, so it has a transform. Uh, but um, at this point, it actually is all local to the object. So get position basically gives you the center of the cell um, and then uh, what it does is uh, for each edge so um, I need to explain this I need uh, I need a diagram uh, so imagine that you have uh, so this is typical XYZ so now we're just thinking about a cell. Um, let the, I, I find it hard actually to, to think about it in this way. So let's, uh, let's clear that. And uh, we just put the Z direction in the other direction. It doesn't really matter um, because it's all kind of equivalent. Oh no. What, what tool did I have before? Maybe I had a different brush, this brush. Okay, so uh, obviously this is the, the center of the cell is, is like somewhere here like that. Uh, so imagine this vertex and th these axes are not, but they're not really sort of X, Y, Z, but um, let's not worry about that. So um, think about this vertex. Uh, there are three edges associated with this vertex. And what the system is going to ask is, um, is the, so the, the whole thing's backed by uh, a model that would tell you whether or not, say, this vertex is inside a solid and maybe this vertex is outside the solid. So if this guy's inside and that guy is outside, say, that means that there's an edge crossing here. There's a, uh, an edge of the surface we're trying to generate. So what we do is we compute here uh, the edge point. Um, that's on this line. So that could sort of move backwards and forwards. So if the underlying geometry is a sphere, maybe it will sort of choose an entry around here. Um, 
I'll just check that that is actually on the screen. Okay, so you generate for these three, and it's just these three edges. For these three edges, you generate the edge points. And then what you do is you say, well, um, and I'll draw another diagram for this. Um, so, uh, so, so this is the center of that cube down there. Um, and let's say that there is an edge point here. Then what we do is that we draw to this guy's center point, and we draw to this guy's center point, and we draw to this guy's center point. So we draw a quad like this. Um, and then what we do is that uh, we want to drag these center points. So these center points will be involved in, in some number of edges. So uh, here, this guy, um, so this, this edge point is involved in one, two, three, four center points. So what we do is that we, uh, we associate this edge point with each one of these center points. And then what we do is that, uh, what I'm doing, this is not what you're supposed to do. In, um, this is kind of like a poor man's uh, dual contouring, is that you, uh, I just average all of, all of the edge points. So let's say we had an edge point there and we had an edge point here and that was affecting this guy and maybe there was an edge point over here. I compute the average, so if you compute the average of these three, that would drag that point down to here, and then that point's dragged down to there. Um, and this system overall seems to be pretty good at creating a closed mesh. So, um, so that's really quickly how how you do dual contouring. Let's uh, have a look at the uh, at the code. Uh, so for each edge, um, here I am. Uh, I'm just computing the uh, the two. Let's go back to the diagram. Computing uh, the the two endpoints of the uh, of the edge. That's E1 and E2 are for the uh, endpoints, and then I see whether they uh, whether there's this is a sign change where the one's inside one material and not inside, and the other one's not inside the, you know, if one's inside the geometry and the other one's outside the geometry. Um, and the, the reason for computing the sign is that you have to get the windings correct. So uh, if you're going, if we come back to this edge and you sort of imagine here, if that's like, a, if that's inside and this is outside, then you have to wind in in one direction, uh, and if it was reversed, you have to wind in the other direction. Um, so that's why uh, that's why I need the sign, no, not just whether they're different. Um, and uh, here it computes the uh, here it's computing the the midpoint of that edge, and then it's adding it to all of the um, uh, all of the vertices that would be connected. Um, and the reason that I have for each cell one and for each cell two is um, uh, is that I uh, for this for the cell points I need to go one grid point further than I actually generate the mesh so that meshes of neighboring cells line up. Then for each cell two, um, here, this is doing the same thing, except that uh, it is um, uh, here. It gets the cell centers, and then it draws a. Uh, it adds a quad, and here it's looking at the sign to do the windings. Um, and then finally, uh, I copy the copy to mesh. And uh, the the Unity system gave me a warning to use uh, shared mesh. If we go back, I guess there's that shared mesh. 
here it's doing um, shared mesh um, instead of mesh. It said that if you do mesh, that will like leak garbage if you do that while it's in the editor. Um, so it's using a shared mesh. I don't really know the difference between mesh and shared mesh. Whoops, I want to go forward. Hey, that's a forward, that forward button's cool. Um, so this guy does uh, uh, copy to mesh um, and then it assigns it um, into the current object. Uh, this assignment doesn't, it's just assigning the same object, but that seems to sort of trigger some sort of recomputation. Um, the other thing I'm, oh, this is the mesh collider, right? So this is sort of a, would, in some sense, a no op assignment. It's assigning the same shared mesh to the mesh collider, but it triggers the mesh collider to recompute. Um, and so Unity's mesh collider is quite good. I'm giving up these. Um, surfaces and uh, it really seems to be generating pretty good colliders from those surfaces um, and uh, so I keep talking about the underlying geometry I've got that in this thing called an entity field um, entity field was a little bit of a hassle in that um, it didn't serialize properly and so I had to write some custom serialization but Unity actually has a pretty good trick for doing that which made it not too painful um, so uh, the underlying geometry I have an entity I have draw gizmo so that you can um, you can turn on drawing the the underlying geometry see if this generated surface lines up with it or not uh, so each geometry object has a density function that tells you at a point what the density is uh, intersects tells you whether the object intersects or not so the rule is that um, the material that you get is well, the sort of the underlying geometry object that you get at a point is whichever is the first point in the list that intersects. So that lets me have a really wide ground plane that's in a lot of places and then spheres, all the spheres go ahead of the ground plane. So it only chooses the ground plane geometry if, the, uh, if it didn't match any of the earlier sphere geometries. And I think that I could also do sort of like a, a layer of dirt um, with that mechanism as well. Um, then has midpoint, there's a default function here that, um, uh, actually I don't know if I'm using has midpoint anymore since I, I changed to sign. But anyway, this is just defined in terms of density. Get midpoint is similarly defined in terms of density, just interpolates between the two points P and Q to try to find the zero crossing. Um, get midpoint sign uh, I think this one's used more well this is probably used instead of has midpoint I could probably delete that um, and then this uh, entity data as data is for serializing uh, the object so then I have ground and uh, ground just always intersects um, this is the last object that I have um, in in my list always um, and it just says you're inside the object if you're less than a height, otherwise you're outside the object. Uh, units are a little bit uh, confusing, um, but the uh, the way the system works is that um, at the moment, uh, our voxel surface object is from zero to one, uh, its coordinates, and uh, it's speaking to entity field in zero to one. And then as you, as you interact with the voxel surface game object, well, I guess it's really a component. So you interact with that component, it transforms from world space into its local zero one space. Um, so then we have a sphere. Um, this guy has uh, has density and uh, and intersects, and then it's uh, all the sort of midpoint calculations are done just from the density that works quite well on a sphere. That midpoint interpolation. I think that ground. Did I do? Yeah. It's interesting that with ground, uh, the density is just minus one one. Um, I, pro I I could have had it. Maybe it should have been like height height minus minus p. That might might be an interesting thing to do. Um, yeah. Interesting. Anyway, 
um, okay, so there's a sphere and a sphere void is just like a sphere except that it's uh, hollow on the inside and solid on the outside. Uh, and then this is for serialization. Um, I have a struct that's marked serializable entity type. This, this struct's just acting as a union. Um, and then uh, I have an entity. So the entity field just has a linked list of entities. And then I can show the, so this stuff's just choosing sort of first match. Uh, where is that? Down here, it's doing stuff like, uh, for get density, it's, um, it's finding first match. Get midpoint is uh, first match as well, I guess, is it? This is using has midpoint. Yeah, I should come back and revisit this now that it sort of basically works. This is all this like iterating through the entity list multiple times is, you know, for each grid point is kind of expensive. But um, I optimized first for just trying to, uh, didn't try to make the code fast to begin with, just tried to make it simple. Um, Okay, so this is actually averaging the midpoint of all the intersecting uh, entities, uh, whereas density is um, just finding the first match. I was going to show the serialization. So it's down the end. I think. It's actually in voxel surface. I had to put it on a game object. It's down the end here, maybe. So they provide two functions, on before serialize and on after serialize. And what you do is that you, um, uh, on before serialize, you copy the data out of um, your sort of convenient representation into something serializable. And then they will serialize this field, uh, but not this one. And then after deserialization, this field will be null. That's not a serialized field. And then uh, you restore it by reading out of this serialized field. So that's a system that actually works reasonably well. Um, it's pretty sort of flexible. Um, so whoever thought of that, I think did a pretty good job. Um, okay, so that's the, uh, that's the voxel uh, surface um, stuff. Okay, that's probably way longer than I intended, so I will leave it there.